Violins are prima donnas. This is a well-known fact amongst members of the orchestra. It is just as widely accepted that flutes are airheads, and everyone knows not to mess with the oboes because they have knives. <laughs> Literally, they use them for their reeds, and they're really quite sharp. Violas are the butt of endless jokes, and the brass keep time better than the Swiss. Every orchestra member knows these things, but unless you've been a part of the sizable violin section, you'd never know the subtle and yet substantial differences between the first and second violins. Maybe the most visible difference is in seating. First violins are situated closer to the audience, while second violins are hidden behind the conductor. The seconds usually consider this quite an advantage, as this means they never have to do their hair for concerts. <laughs> The firsts, on the other hand, will tell you that they love being near the edge. Not only do they have an excuse to own a rather impressive number of hairpins, but they are also in the perfect position to wave at their assorted friends and family members in the audience. Not, of course, that they would ever stoop to such an unprofessional action. <laughs> Still, it's always nice to know that they could if they wanted to. The seconds never say so, but they'd kill for a chance to wave. <laughs> First violins always get the melody. Seconds are stuck with tuneless harmony. Sometimes the seconds have to act as a sort of built-in metronome, though not usually, as this is generally the viola's job, something in which the seconds take great pleasure. Not only is this job, job mundane and tiresome, but it's also quite humiliating. The first simply adore making snide little comments on these occasions. Oh, you must be so bored with the Beethoven. So sorry you've got that ridiculously monotonous part. I, of course, am playing that lovely melody. You know, the one that sounds like angel singing? <laughs> or, you're lucky to have that repetitive bit at the end of the sonata. You have no idea how fast we're playing at the finale. Or, don't worry, dear, you'll be one of us soon enough. You did re-audition, didn't you? Oh, what a shame. I was so sure they'd move you up. And yet, firsts always forget that they were seconds once. They all were seconds before they were firsts, except for possibly it's Och Perlman. But he's another story altogether. Some seconds become firsts, but just as money never do. They sit there, wasting away in the back of their section, plotting their revenge. Not only must they endure ridicule from the firsts, some of them, former fellow sufferers in seconddom, but they are made to strain their necks over rows and rows of heads just to see the conductor. They must watch as shrimpy kids with flying fingers pop out of nowhere to steal the spot three rows up that they rightfully own. After all, they've been coveting it for years. For years. So it's not surprising that sometimes even seconds themselves forget that they are the backbone of the orchestra. They hold everything together. They have the hard work, the dirty work. It is only because of them that the firsts are a success. The first hate admitting it, but they know it's true. They would never stay on track if it weren't for the steady, constant presence of the seconds. The seconds are there to help the first shine. They play the low notes, the ugly notes, the notes no one wants to hear. The first are shimmering bursts of color, playing notes so high they land in heaven. But any first will tell you it is easy to get lost up there in the clouds, and they will grudgingly admit that the seconds are always there to catch them when they fall back to earth. As much as both parties loathe to say it, they are a team. And even though the insults always fly, and even though they always will, the violins won't hear a word from anyone else against the very colleagues they so ruthlessly tease. It's like they always say, once a violin, always a violin. The violins are a family, a rather dysfunctional one, but a family nevertheless. Together, they complain about the conductor behind his back. They roll their eyes at one another when board members make long, tiresome speeches at banquets. They lend each other rosin and dust cloths. They are a family. So, oboes may have knives, but the violins are strong in number. So don't think for a minute that you can get away with aiming even one cruel word in their direction, because you can't. Their section members, both firsts and seconds, will find you, and you should never underestimate the power of a spare bow.